I'm Mark, I'm a table tennis coach and player from Canesham and today I've got a little new feature, I don't know quite how it's going to work uh, or whether it's even going to go live, um, you know, and be part of what I'm trying to do when we're chatting table tennis, um, get on the gallery view, there we go. Um, so yeah, I'm here with um, Sue, she's my former table tennis captain um, and during this weird lockdown period, um, I just want to start branching out and talking to table tennis people I know in the local area. Um, seeing how they're doing during lockdown and um, yeah, get their take on all things table tennis. So Sue, do you want to do a little introduction? Hi, well, I'm, I'm Sue. I've um, been captain of the Key Centre uh, table tennis team in the second division and I've been doing it for about six years, six or seven years. Haven't been playing at all during lockdown. <laughs> No, exactly. It's hard, yeah. Um, I see randomly like Ken out and about walking a few times, and um, I've yeah. seen I've seen Dave walking his dog as well. Um, I don't think Dave at all, so or any of the guys actually. So missing, yeah. missing all that dreadfully. You might have seen uh, the chap Matt, is it? Who used to play? Yeah, yeah. Kingsley. I've only seen him about twice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Matt is Sue's son. Um, so. Um, Basically, we all used to play in the same team. The mainstays were me, Sue, Matt, and uh, Dave. So that was our little funky bunch that uh, we used to knock around in Division Two with. Um, yeah, we even won Division Two at one time. We did, yeah. That was um, three ago. years ago. Yeah, without that was that was great fun. Very unexpected promotion, wasn't it? It was. We all worked hard. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and so Sue, uh, you're one of just, I've, I've looked, I'm going to look down at my notes because um, you're one of just four women in Bath Division 2 and overall in Bath, guess the total number for me. Probably only about six I would have thought, six spot, or seven. Spot on, yeah, six, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was quite shocked when I saw that. I thought there was going to be maybe touching 10. You know, I knew it was going to be a low number considering there's probably about 150 players there or thereabouts um, who played one or two games knocking well, I think the number probably doubled in the last two or three years we've got a few newer women players that have joined in at the second division and are starting to build their way up and get a bit stronger yeah they are yeah um, in particular um, I like the play of um, Lily actually who plays for Oldfield um, she's, she's done very good. well just, yes. needs, just needs to keep working hard and converting um, the matches into wins really um, that's the key yeah next couple of years for her in particular. Um, yeah, she's a strong contender. She is, yeah, so passionate as well. Yes, that's um, <laughs> <Fair> enough. <laughs> and also I looked up a fun fact as well. So um, as you know, I'm quite geeky um, in terms of personality and table tennis. Um, so I've recorded all my um, sort of matches and um, facts and figures um, um, 2012 to now. And um, I've never actually beaten you. I don't know what <laughs> I did before that point, but yeah. Um, you would now. <laughs> you I don't know. <laughs> Luckily, we'll never... everything in the book. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll never find out. But um, interestingly, oh. as well, interestingly, each time uh, it's been three-one wins for you. Wow. Yeah. I would have never guessed that at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> I would have never guessed that. Okay, yeah, well, I thought, I thought yeah, it's good doing my little research then. Um, Definitely, that's made my day. Yeah. <laughs> but since then, you see, you've either been in my own team or yeah. you've gone on to another, into another division where I wouldn't be likely to play against you anyway because I'm sure that you'd beat me easily right now. Uh, I, try, I, I would try hard, yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, well, any time now, Kenshin Table Tennis Club, little plug there every Friday night at Summerdale Pavilion. Yeah, never yeah. miss an opportunity I, to plug that. It's a little more relaxed than those situations, and I think uh, we relax generally when we play against each other or somebody we know well anyway. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. And so I wanted to really like look at um, sort of how you got involved with um, table tennis. You know, was it from a young age or how did it come about? Well, but I was. I grew up in a household where my dad always played. He was a, a top player in Bristol at the time. I was one of four children and there was always a table up in our lounge, even with a couple of inches each end of the room. It was a tiny room, massive table in. Oh, and that was a Monday night, the table was out, we'd all play. 
Um, and it kind of stemmed from there because my brothers got involved in playing. At my age then, which was as a teenager trying to get into the league, it was really difficult. There were no encouragements for women to get into the table tennis at that time. I had a friend at school, similar age, who was very keen, um, and we had no support from the school. Mm. So we had to make our own way in it. We, we um, found a table, but they would only let us play on that table if it was in the boys' changing rooms, which, as you can imagine, was about pleasant at the time. Yeah. Um, we joined a Bristol league um, when we were 15. And I think because we played at that age, we've always played. Yeah, that's um, good. And we were continuing, even though we grew up, got married, had children. We still played while we were having the children. I think mean, I've played pregnant. You know, there's no reason why we shouldn't. But because I've played for so long, for so many years, it's in my blood and I still enjoy playing. That's brilliant. Yeah. And you moved away. You haven't always been in Bristol, have you? You've moved away. So I moved to Cornwall um, in my early 20s. And I lived there for 14 years and I played in the Cornish League there in mid Cornwall Table Tennis League. And it's the same issue wherever you go. Very, very few women played. Mm. Therefore, quite often I was women's champion because there wasn't that much competition. <laughs> um, uh, but always encouraged to play, and um, Cornwall have a good setup there as well. Um, always welcomed. That, that's the beauty of table tennis in general is that women are always welcome. I've never felt like a second class citizen playing in a man's world of table tennis, yeah, which it, yeah. I've always been accepted and welcomed and treated as an equal. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I guess the success of potentially you know getting some you know titles and bits and pieces like this um you know it's no mean feat you still have to beat who's in front of you haven't you on the day yeah I mean, it sounds better than it is in a lot of ways uh, because of the numbers but then equally the numbers the diversity of the women that do play can be very high or very low yeah. in quite extremes whereas when you've got men playing um there's such a vast number you've got lots of groups of people at the same levels if you see what i mean mm, true true and mostly so then, in one place, it's mostly older women rather than the younger ones yeah and so then you move back to um bristol canesham area um after the Cornwall stint yeah and then threw myself straight back into the key center i found the key center um welcoming and just joined in and uh, met met ken and uh, graham and all the guys at the key centre that have been yeah. running for years on end and just kind of got involved. From, from there, the rest is history, really. Yeah, and we, we've touched on it. Um, obviously, your brother um, plays at a good standard or did play at a good standard. Yes, he does, yeah. Um, I've got a nephew that plays and he's played for one season in the key centre. Um, couldn't play yeah. for very long because of his job. Um, my son plays. I've got... A couple of children that don't play um but it's one of those sports that everybody can tinker with yeah exactly um, right exactly right uh, they can play table tennis and whether it's of any big standard or a lower standard i've never reached the standards my dad have or my brother but i just enjoy the game and the whole yeah. social aspect and bit of sport yeah. bit of exercise meeting yeah. great people like yourself who's very <laughs> enthusiastic yeah, I kind of liken, I haven't told anyone this before, but I kind of liken table tennis to like a skill set or computer game that you can never win. Um, and I've noticed, you know, over the years, obviously myself getting better, but I've noticed in particular over the last few years, you've been getting a lot better as well. Do you feel you're still improving and developing different bits and pieces? There's always something to learn with table tennis, and that's the thing. And you either learn something about other people or you learn something about yourself. I don't know if I've improved drastically in any way, um, but I just keep plugging away and you have good days and bad days. And I think women are better or worse than men at that because I think we tend to be a bit more temperamental um, and we don't have quite the aggressive streak that men do that's needed to really win the games. There are, there's always the exception, always. But um, I, I think generally just quite happy to play. 
like like you said like you mentioned earlier um your dad and you know sort of the siblings around you got you playing mm-hmm. at a young age and you know involved and want to keep going i i kind of see in the baths of junior scene that there's very few girls playing there and we've got one girl at uh, my club kinsham table tennis club who looks up to you know looks forward to playing with women but we've only got one or two older women how do we sort of try and encourage more girls to to start the sport or kind of if they've started as a as a junior to try and keep keep going is a very hard question mind. <laughs> it is a very difficult one but i think young girls especially need someone else that they can be with uh, like you said if you've got one young lady she's going to want another one to, to keep that encouragement and the bond going unless they've got a brother or a friend, a female friend, or even a male friend, to go with, I think people don't keep going. And it, or even if they bring their mum, that's, mm. that's just as good, if they could bring their mums. Because mums tend to, don't, tend to not think of table tennis as being a sport for them. They do need that encouragement to, to come along. And if they can drag any female relative into it, whether it's a cousin or, or, or a close friend, that that's the way that you're going to get them in and hopefully once they they're in the room and join the sport they will keep coming and because um you know da- down in bath you know our sort of local um district table tennis you know committee if you like um organization they ran a very successful sort of trial with um table tennis england to bring more women into the sport um but happened to be a lot of um older ladies Obviously, when it came to uh, each year, we have in February, I think it is, around my birthday, actually, we tend to have like the open competition. So, you know, singles, it's not doubles, is it? It's restricted, veterans, uh, different competitions like that. But we don't have a a women's tournament. Have we potentially missed a trick in, you know, the sort of last season to actually put on an event like that to try and get people playing? That is a possibility. Um from from my understanding, talking because I went along to that training session with all the women just to refresh my own playing, learn a few more skills, um, but also to meet the ladies that wanted to do that kind of thing. And we were all of a similar age group. Hmm. My what I was hearing from them was that playing late didn't suit them. Okay. They were all home by eight o'clock and didn't want to be out. And this is what I'm hearing from female colleagues that don't play i have some friends at work as soon as they finish work they just want to go home it's late they don't want to go back out again and start playing so if you can get a group of people together or women together to play in a small tournament i think that that might be a start i don't know how many you'd get in numbers but it's certainly worth a try and then to get some of the other guys to support that as well so that there is an integration that that might work yeah, because um, I attended the the under fifteens um, junior tournament on that weekend of the Open, so you know just before COVID, yeah. and um, I think there was only I think there was about sixteen competitors, and I think only two, three of them were were girls. So I think there definitely is a shortage in in our sort of area for um, you know female representation mm-hmm. um, across ages. Yeah, I, it would be it would be interesting to go into a school or something with some questionnaires I think possibly and just say would any females consider table tennis and if not why not I think we, it needs a representative or for some of us to talk to PE teachers and see whether there's an interest in schools generally to get people involved or young ladies involved in table tennis and if they're not interested why what, we, mm. what is where are the gaps that we're not filling that would make a young lady interested in playing. Yeah, and of course, I went through the education system in Bath um, at an all-boys school, and there was obviously uh, Hayesfield and Oldfield that were the all-girls schools. Um, obviously, Oldfield's mixed now, but if you were going into, you know, like an all-girls school, would it help mm. having potentially a female lead, not necessarily a coach, but a female presence, you know, young female presence to, to sort of encourage the girls to play more, potentially? Is it, I don't know, would, would they respond well to you know sort of you know our older coaches that we have here in Bath? I think I think they would. Yeah. I know when we had the training sessions for the ladies especially we they introduced a couple of table tennis England women experts and that was great, very enthusiastic. That was 
um, the ladies were happy to ask the questions and get involved and they stayed for a while and played against them. And I think going into, they can go into schools and do that with enthusiasm and show the passion. That is definitely a, a door open to introduce yeah. that to them. Yeah, because interestingly, I remember when, when I was a kid growing up and it was Morlin's junior school, obviously mixed in juniors. And we had a lady from our church, um, Judy Higgs. She was a qualified table tennis coach and she actually came to our junior school and introduced the sport to multiple years in our school and, you know, then gave us the pathway to come and practice at a club. Mm -hmm. But yeah, potentially we possibly need some more of that, you know, going on uh, locally, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult thing, I think. Young ladies are interested in so many other things. Boys seem to naturally go down the sporting line and girls don't very often. It's certainly in a mi minority as we're experiencing. I think once you've gone, if you miss the teenage years and you get into mum age, mums will send their boys to the, to the clubs and not consider it for themselves. Uh, and I think it's still quite old fashioned in that the mums are, are intending to stay at home in the evenings and look after the young children. Where, and the dads might go out and play football and do whatever. But I don't think that mums get included in having a night out to go do table tennis. If we've got a night out to themselves, they'll want to go out and drink, drink with the mates. Just trying to get people out of any age, women out of any age, especially if they've got kids at home still. Because, because if, you, if they've got their sons going along, you've got a lot of sons, young men, that come to your club young teenagers yeah. and the mums will bring them and then go home true true is there any way of encouraging the mums to stay and play because in my experience again at that the ladies evening that we held the, the tr ladies training it was yeah. all older ladies whose kids had grown up and they got into it because their husbands played occasionally and then they got into a local uh, group sort of social group and they decided to come as a group of ladies to come and have a go at practice sessions. Yeah, that's actually um, another lady that plays in the league, Dawn Turner. She runs the meetup group in Bath, doesn't she? For you know, ladies and men. Yeah, there's quite a bit of female participation there. Yeah, in, in real terms, I think our Bath League have doubled their women players or so in the last couple of years. Yeah. So that is working, and they're coming up from the second division, and then some of the better ones are going up to the first division, and, and they'll diversify through so you need to encourage that and pursue exactly. that as well and i mean just thinking out loud and spitballing on those couple of points there about um the time element where people drop off their sons or daughters to potentially multiple different sports essentially then setting up on say a saturday morning or sunday morning when kids are going to football holding not necessarily women's only session but you know sort of aim it primarily at women to, to play table tennis during that hour and a half that they're their kids yeah. are playing um, football. And a weekend is good, I think, because if you work, mm. if you're a lady that works, then trying to fit that in is a difficult thing to do. Um, as you know, even with men, men that play in the table tennis leagues generally are retired. Yeah, I still consider um, myself a junior at um, 33, so yeah. Absolutely, We're, I, and I, I'm in the young element. You know, mm. and that's, that's crazy, isn't it? But it shows you that it's a sport that diversifies over every age and ability, being expensive, but you don't need any amazing kit. So it should be something to be encouraged in this world of austerity yeah. at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and I think you've hit the nail on the head there with um, changing attitudes and sort of lifestyles that people nowadays, because, you know, obviously with the world all crazy as it is now with everyone working from home, it's even yeah. more strange but you know when people go back a lot of people then be working different shift patterns different yes. ways of working and so that potentially yeah. 7 30 till half 10 11 um match style play might be more suited to a 11 till 1 lunchtime gathering sort of thing on a saturday or sunday but i i, I mean even myself now my i'm working from home now and if that continues, then I could come along to your club evenings um, and perhaps work with some of the younger element of ladies that want to get involved. Exactly. Um, but it's also good for the young teenage boys and younger men playing to see women around there to play, to think, actually, this could be my sister, this could be my mum. And then mm. they might go home and talk about that and say, you know, women are playing, why don't you come along? Exactly. And I think, um, I think you're right there in the element of you know the young 
young guys and older guys, you know, mixing around women through table tennis because, um, you know, I've noticed that a lot of our juniors from Kingsham Table Tennis Club, you know, the ones that have been coming for a couple of years now, um, their yeah. attitudes and um, work rate and respect and integration with older people has gone up tenfold. You know, there's lads who are quite sulky, quite sullen or very quiet lads, mm -hmm. you know, two years ago. And now they're, you know, messing around with, you know, people in their 60s, you know, 50s, yeah. 40s you know young working guys like me and they're talking to them on a level playing field and I don't think that you know you get that in everyday life I mean when you're walking down Kingsham High Street people can yeah. be sometimes intimidated by the younger generation. I, I also think that a lot of the young people now with the way families are don't always have the grandparents nearby so mixing with a group like yours that's got such different ages in them um, it, it, as you've already said improves their social skills massively yeah. Um, and as you say, we've had Chris uh, and James join my team this year and, and they, they've been absolutely amazing and welcomed and very polite with everyone that they've met. Just just don't wind James up too much, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was actually going to ask about that as well. Um, so obviously we touched on it then, um, you know, Chris and James coming through from Kencham Table Tennis Club and, and proving, you know, good assets to Division 2. Um, with next year hopefully on the horizon if the world goes to plan you know um, yeah, whatever that may look like whether it's still doubles or no doubles or what have you um, you know we're potentially going to chop and change some of the teams and you know bits yeah. and pieces you know would you like to see more more people come through um, through the C team to sort of go up or how have you sort of found it managing this season it's um, it's been very different because also I've got a whole new team but they're all extremely uh, talented and very supportive of what I'm trying to do. It's always like being mum with all you guys around, you know, trying to organise the phone calls and the transport and all that sort of thing. But the more the merrier. We, we, we open the doors to new players all the time and everyone gets a chance. And if they're keen to play and they're keen to get involved, then they're welcome to stay and join in and we can have more teams got capacity to have more teams yeah at least one more yeah certainly you know on that night of the week but yeah if there's other nights open up then certainly yeah well if, if we have that many people to do that we'd look at expanding the club generally wouldn't we mm. yeah true um, or, or merge with yours it depends whether summer day are keen to get involved very much on on that scale because mm. Cainton uh, can offer a lot to table tennis so there's a lot more that we can do to get people in, I think. Yeah, and obviously in, in the town itself, it's expanding as well, you know, at both ends of, you know, the, you know, the sort of Charton Road and this sort of Wales yeah. end as well. So there's lots more families and communities coming to the area. And I think we are really bucking the trend a little bit in terms of being a bit more of a forward thinking progressive club, you know, overseen by sort of Ken at, at the helm to, to really, you know, be a bit of a powerhouse in locally in table tennis in the Bath area. Yeah. And yourself, you're making a big noise for us all, which is great. <laughs> yeah, try. We we try a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I thought I'd, I thought I'd go a bit fun now because obviously okay. we played with each other from uh, what? So after you'd beaten me in 2013, so it must have been 2013, 14 onwards to to last mm -hmm. season. What's been your sort of um, standout moment in those sort of recent years? Is there any match that you remember and think, oh yeah, that you know? that's happened or this has happened or anyone you've been pleased of you know your performance and what have you uh, there's always a few people that I play very well against compared to other people and it just, I think it all comes down to style mm. and if you've got a similar style to the person you're playing against then you just you just throw everything at it and have a, quite an interesting game my memory is not as it should be uh, <laughs> As of, as of recent years, um, but the, the standout games and tournaments and matches for me are where you have that social interaction, mm. and it's not, it's not just about the game itself. It's about enjoying each other's company, appreciating the skills. Whether you have funny moments, you have, mm. you know, I've had some stupid moments. I've fallen over. Um, screens and things and hurt myself quite badly at times and some days I go around looking like I've been out 
paintballing where, <laughs> where the ball has hit me so hard, but nothing ever seriously happens, you know, as far as damage goes. And it's all great fun that we have a laugh about. And I have never felt threatened by being a woman. Um, I feel quite proud that I'm a woman playing table tennis and um, people always treat me, me with respect. Exactly, yeah. And that, that's, that's huge and that's great. And that's Bath Table Tennis League generally. And they always ask me my thoughts and opinions. I try and join in as much as I can. I try and do what I can around my working hours, which are quite long. And I'd like to continue doing that. I haven't quite gone down the coaching route, but... Um, Still time. I can't commit the time to that just yet, but maybe that will happen in the future. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, one... Um... One performance stood out for me. It was an away game. I, I don't want to give away the the team or the the players. I'm trying to describe it so that me and you know who it is. And it was probably two years ago now. Um, I think it's the season we went up and it was away. And we turned up at the Village Hall. So it gives it away a little bit. <clears throat> and we we played, there was a new player, a couple of new players playing for that team. We put, I, I played the, the new guy first and um, I beat him you know, quite, quite okay, quite comfortably. Um, but he, I think yeah. he put up a little bit of a fight. Then um, I think our other player, I forget whether it was Matt or Dave, played him and I think struggled a little bit. And I think you played him last and absolutely wiped the floor with the guy. He didn't know what to do, how to act, how to stand. I thought that was quite yeah. a curious game. Yeah. That, I do vaguely remember that actually. And mm. there, there are some incredibly good players that I played against and I said and I beat them easily and I said why and they said you're a woman I can't play you (laughs) so sometimes it's an advantage there was a a chap who used to belong to the key centre who doesn't play with us now he moved away and he could never beat me and yet he was a top first division player and it was just thought it wasn't his it was just couldn't get his head around it I don't know why We, we have played some interesting matches. Sometimes we've played on Halloween and turned up in fancy dress. Yeah, that was, I think that was just before my time. That's, yeah, that's unfortunate, but yeah. yeah that was that. And another female player that we had um, before she went off to uni, Jack, young Jackie. Yeah. No, I was going to say, we, we should shout her out on, on this video and yeah, get her back involved. Yeah, I'll have a word with her grandfather. I know him well. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think that was that was everything I had noted down anyway. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to sort of um, yeah reminisce over the like the old times really. Um, I, I miss actually playing playing for you, Sue, because obviously I had to step up and and be the captain when we got promoted last year. We missed that too, Mark, very much. You and Dave. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then obviously, yes. like like I said, there's gonna be a lot of changes um, potentially if uh, we lose a few players from a few of the different teams. So. So yeah, we might get to play together again at some point, but you know. But that's the joy of the game though, isn't it? Because each year we get those changes and we adapt and evolve and do what's best for the club. Exactly. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. It's all about I'll still be here. You'll probably still be here. Yeah. <laughs> the young guys will go on to school or uni or a college or go and leave Cainsham entirely, but we'll all still be here. And we've got, um, I've got two uh, younger lads than, um, than James and Chris actually um, looking to try and step up into the league. Um, obviously with this whole world as, as we are at the minute, that the, this yeah. sort of summer league um, went to pot. Obviously nobody can play. Um, so mm-hmm. that was going to be their stepping stone. And then slowly and yeah. the next season. So whether we fast track that a little bit, um, because they are the sort of under 15s bath champion and runner up as well. Uh, so we got wow. uh, yeah Nathan is the uh, under 15s champ and and he's the runner up. Oh, that Nathan Candy. That's it. Yeah. I know his mum. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we haven't got a bat in her hand yet, actually. No, I'm going to have to have a word with her then. <laughs> yeah, because um yeah Nathan's dad Andy he uh, is literally called Nathan's dad. That's his um peg on our little peg system. <laughs> oh, brilliant! His mum's Julie. Julie, yeah, that's I used to think of him, uh, many years ago. Um, and Nathan's got a brother as well, hasn't he? I've heard of the brother. Yeah, never met. Yeah, never met um, the brother yet. Uh, yeah. Go get them involved. Get them in as a family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but um, yeah, so we could potentially have a couple of, of youngsters still coming through, which is great. And how's um, how's Matt getting on? 
He's doing really well. Steve's been working all the way through. Um, still working solid. Yeah, and of course that's um, Tim, so. Timson's garage, isn't it? In Kingsham. It is indeed. Yes, and he's been doing, still been keeping the garage open and uh, looking after all the key workers' cars. Yeah, and he's kept really busy. But he's missing the table tennis, and you and Dave especially getting back into it. Yeah, exactly. I still feel we've got to get Matt dressed up as Thor at some point, you know, for a table tennis game. <laughs> well, he, he dressed up as um, the Joker once on the Halloween and did far too good a job of that. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Long time, that would be good. We'll yeah. all have to come dressed as superheroes then, won't we? Exactly, yeah. What would I be? I couldn't. Oh, <laughs> I have no idea. I'm thinking Spider Man, so you have to wear the, the mask. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got the costume for that actually. Oh, okay, that's mm -hmm. a doer then. <laughs> Happy days. <laughs> yeah, was, was there any other sort of um, table tennis related topics you wanted to sort of bring up or talk about at all? Um, off the top of my head, I don't think so. <laughs> no, we've um, covered quite a lot there, didn't we? We so, did, didn't um, we? Yeah. yeah, very wide range. Put our heads together again about how we see if I can find out if I know any PE teachers in schools that might help us out with some questionnaires or something. Exactly. Yeah, no, that'd be good. Okay. All right, perfect. Well, yeah, that that's it for this first session of I don't know what this uh, the title of our little talk is gonna gonna be. I'm sure I'll put something creative in a in a thumbnail if it ever gets online. Um, no, thank you very much. Sue. <laughs> Sorry? You have to do some massively good editing. Ah, true, true. I can't do anything <laughs> about the hair though, can I? So. Oh, it's fine. I get, you get the razor on it, you'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. But no, thanks for taking time out to speak to me, Sue. My pleasure, Mark. It's always good to talk to you. <laughs> Cheers, thank you.